He emboldens bigots. Yes. But bigots embolden him as well. There are many. Not all of his supporters are bigots. I'm not saying that. But there are people who are out there who don't stand up to this president. And so what category does that put you in if you don't stand up to this president when it is obvious, beyond a doubt, that what he is promoting is bigotry? You use the word racist if you want. Some people want to use that word. But for me, it's bigotry because it's more, it's, it's, also, it's about blacks. It's about, as you always say, Chris, that. you call it the brown menace. Yeah. It's also about anti-Semites mm -hmm. as well. Um, and, and, and on and on. It's about uh, misogynist. Mm. He emboldens that sort of thing because he thinks it will help him. He knows it will help him politically. And what does that say about us as Americans? That something like this can help him politically. It's, I, it, it's unfathomable to me. I just don't understand it. Well, look, we are in a cultural reversal right now. We had spent years letting people know, like this guy in Gilroy, that you need to stay down and you need to stay away because we are not about you. Right. That has reversed. Here's what I feel badly for. When we're in a place like this in Detroit, and you know, on the radio show, I get to talk to people all across the country. All He's doing them a disservice, the people who believe in him as a disruptor of the norm, who will finally find some way for government to care about them and people like them. Mm -hmm. Because now they've got to own all this talk. And a lot of them didn't sign up for that. They signed up because they want manufacturing back. They want other things. You're right. Some people cotton to him because of the hate. But not all of them. Well, there are many reasons that people, that some of the people who do it on television do it because they feel that they have to politically, they're getting paid. It's a paycheck somewhere. Mm. Other and they're people, afraid of him. He's very and, popular. And they're afraid the of him, right. And they're afraid of him. Other people do it because in some way they think it's a reflection of them. And if they call out his um, bad behavior, his bigotry, and at times racism, then that makes them either bigoted, racist, or complicit. Mm. And I think that is something that you, um, you got to dig deep. That's a, that's a fantastic question to ask yourself in this moment. Who am I? What am I? What am I supporting? And is what I'm doing American? Is, is this the best way, not only for me and for my family, for this country as well? Am I putting, um, am I elevating or at least prioritizing mm bigotry and racism over the right thing to do. I mean, I, I and, think... And economic advantage as well. Yeah, and look, it is an obvious question. Yes. Because <laughs> you cannot say that I love the president because of his economics and I don't like what he says on... No, no. Uh, it's not like the guy is picking one team over another in a football game. Yeah. Uh, these are real divisions and he's playing on them and they cannot be dismissed. They may think they can be, but, but they cannot. And tomorrow night... Uh, I mean, you know how much I love you, and it's going to be great to see you up there because this is a chance. This country is desperate for better than yeah. it's getting right now. Yeah. What man or woman can have a message and connect themselves as the proper agent for that message with the American people? Uh, and it's great that you're going to be bringing out that conversation. That is a very important question, and we have many important questions that we are going to um, present to the candidates tomorrow night. Always a pleasure, my friend. Get Proud yourself a good night. Happy rest. Time. Uh, we got some more work, some big work to, to deal with while we're here and in the future and beyond. Chris Cuomo, the anchor of Primetime. Thank you, sir. See you soon. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. Live here in Detroit, as you can see, where we are counting down to night one of our CNN Democratic presidential debate. You see that countdown clock. There it is. We'll put it up right there on your screen. Taking the stage tomorrow night, beginning at 8 Eastern. Here we go. Williamson, Ryan, Klobuchar. Buttigieg, Sanders, Warren, O'Rourke, Hickenlooper, Delaney, and Bullock. And then on Wednesday, Bennett, Gillibrand, Castro, Booker, Biden, Harris, Yang, Gabbard, Inslee, and de Blasio. They will be up on the second night. Two nights, 20 candidates, every one of them vying for the nomination for the chance to run against the president. Each of them will get a chance to answer tough questions, and they're going to get a chance to make their case to the American voter. And you'll hear the whole thing live right here on CNN, of course. But you know what? We've got to talk about what the president of the United States is doing, what he's been doing. We've got to talk about his deliberate and intentional strategy of attacking people of color. You know we have to talk about that. I wish I could say that I am shocked or surprised, but I'm not. And you probably aren't either.
It has happened too many times for the man who launched his political career by pushing the racist birther attack on President Barack Obama. The president is the race baiter in chief, blatantly using his attacks to stir up his base and to distract you from what he doesn't want you to pay attention to. His latest target is House Oversight Chairman Elijah Cummings. And that is no coincidence. The president is riled up about the chairman's investigations of the administration. So he goes on a Twitter tirade against Elijah Cummings and his majority black district, by the way, which includes much of Baltimore, calling it, and this is a quote, a disgusting rat and rodent infested mess. And then he goes on to tweet, quote, no human being would want to live there. No human being would want to live there. More than 600,000 human beings, hardworking men and women, parents and their children, grandmothers, grandfathers, they live in Baltimore. They live in that city. Imagine if that was your family that the president is insulting. Well, Elijah Cummings doesn't have to imagine. Do you know why? Because he is the son of former sharecroppers. He was born and raised in Baltimore. But the president insults him and degrades an entire community and doubles down by incredibly calling Chairman Cummings himself racist. And by the way, it is really rich for this president to be slamming Baltimore by calling it rat infested. Since his son-in-law and his senior advisor, Jared Kushner's family's business, owns thousands of Baltimore apartments, apartments with a history of code violations, including rodent infestations. It's particularly ironic that the president's making these comments when we know here in Baltimore County in 2017 that his son-in-law directly contributed to some of the neglect that the president purportedly is so concerned about today. I just want you to listen. Please listen to what one former tenant of a Kushner property told CNN's Randy Kay about what it was like to live in one of those apartments. So what was it like to hear rats at night? Oh my God, it was, it was crazy. I could hear them gnawing, but you can't see them, but I could hear it. Um, and, and it just made me crazy. And despite the president's claim that Baltimore is rat infested, House Republicans are hos holding their annual retreat there in September. I wonder if he'll speak at that retreat like he did last year. But that word, infested, that word is a particularly loaded one coming from this president, a word he sure likes to use when he is attacking people of color. You remember his racist attack on those four Congresswomen, tweeting that they should go back to the, quote, crime-infested places from which they came, even though every one of them is an American citizen. And you remember when he tweeted that sanctuary cities which protect undocumented immigrants, many of them people of color, were crime infested? You remember when he tweeted that MS-13 was infesting our country? Infested, 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 over and over and over. In spite of that, you're not hearing a full-throated defense of Congressman Elijah Cummings from his good friend, Congressman Mark Meadows. He apparently couldn't even muster more than a secondhand defense, if you can even call it that. Congressman Meadows. Sent a text to Rick Santorum, giving him his permission to read it out loud on the lead with Jake Tapper today. And here's the quote. No one works harder for his district than Elijah. He's passionate about the people he represents. And no, Elijah is not a racist. I'm friends with both President Trump and Chairman Cummings. I know them both well, and neither is a racist. That after Cummings, really stuck his neck out to defend Meadows on live TV after Meadows took offense when he thought Congressman Rashida Tlaib had called him a racist. If there's anyone who is sensitive with regard to race, it's me. Son of former sharecroppers that were basically slaves. So I, I get it. Um, I listened very carefully to Ms. Tlaib. And I think, and I, I don't want to, I'm not going to put words in her mouth, but I think 
she said that she was not calling you a racist. And I thought that we could clarify that. Because you, Ms. Mr. Meadows, you know, uh, and of all the people on this committee, uh, I've said it and got in trouble for it, that you're one of my best friends. I know that shocks a lot of people. And, and likewise, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. But you are. And I would do, and I could see and feel your pain. I feel it. And so, and I don't think Ms. Salib intended to cause you that, that, that kind of pain and that kind of frustration. That was then. This is now. Now things are different. So much for friendship.